Hello, Voices of Women. My name is Diane Danvers Simmons, and I am absolutely thrilled and honored to be here today speaking with you. I'm a mother, a traveler, a brand builder, a writer slash author, a female activist, and I am the founder of Own It, Feel It, Live It, which is a female empowerment platform. I am also, as of earlier this year, a podcast founder, host, and producer of Mothers and Daughters Unfiltered, which is a podcast that I created with my very own millennial daughter. And also, most recently in this past year, uh, right in the middle of COVID, actually, it's amazing how the world works, uh, I became uh, one of the founding partners of Women Heart to Heart, which is a global community. So, as you can guess, one of my passions is sharing stories and encouraging women to use their voice. And it's actually one of the things that really attracted me to Voices of Women, because with Own It, Feel It, Live It, in all the film work I've done and um, with uh, Mothers and Daughters Unfiltered, actually, our podcast, one of the things we wrote on our, one of our original documents and reasons for actually creating the show is as follows. Women matter. Our voices matter. Our stories matter. Let's break down the walls that divide us and share our stories to empower women of all ages, backgrounds, and walks of life. And that's why I felt immediately aligned with Voices of Women and what Voices of Women's goals and mission is. But first, what I will say is if you would have asked me this two years ago before I completed the narrative memoir that I just completed this year through COVID, of course, um, I would have said when I made the choice to come to America on my own and pursue my career, when I had my, my children and became a mother and took on that responsibility, that immense responsibility of bringing a good human being into the world, two human beings actually. I would have thought of many different things, you know, career, career related, which is often what we associate power with. But power is so much more than that. It's so much more deeper. And what I realized in writing the book that yes, certainly as a, as a woman, I, I found power in doing that. Um, but it was when I was 16. That's when I first knew that I had a strong core, that I had the power to withstand anything that life was going to throw at me. And what happened is a week after my 16th birthday, my mother announced to me that she was leaving my father and I. Clearly I was in utter shock as she stood there and so calmly told me she was leaving. But it was really the next day when I got home from my Saturday job and sure enough, she cleared everything she possessed out of our home that I realized the reality, the reality that she really had up and left. But where I found my strength and my power was when my father walked through the door that night. 
and I stood in the hallway to greet him. And in that moment, our roles reversed and I as the child stood there and something, some strength, some power within me rose up as I was the one that had to tell my father that my mother had left us. His wife of 16 years had left us. And it, it, it's all very surreal now, but I remember as he slumped, I stepped forward and I caught him in my arms and I looked at him and said, Dad, we're gonna be okay. We have each other and we're gonna work it out. And that's when I knew that the foundation my parents had given me, that my own soul and spirit somewhere deep down had risen up when I needed it the most to support me so I could support my father. So own it is own your own choices. And it's really about awareness. Onus is about awareness. How did we end up in this situation? What was my role in this situation? What is it I want to own moving forward in my life? I mean, I think we've all heard the expression own it quite a lot in these past number of years. And then feel it is about attention. Attention to not just how we're feeling, but what matters to us, how a situation makes us feel, whether it be another person, an interaction with another person, whether it be something that you feel energy-wise when you walk into a room. Is there something that is constricting your voice? What is the, what is the physicality as well as the mental attention that you're paying to situations. We think through everything so much, but how is it actually reacting or manifesting itself in our bodies? And how does our spirit drive that? So feel it is mind, body, spirit, unity, because let's face it, we're not fragments of human beings. We're not pieces floating all over the place. We are this whole being. So it's about approaching life as a whole. How does it make me feel emotionally, physically, spiritually? And then live it is simply action. Once we understand our part in a situation, we can review a situation or an experience, how we feel about it then we can go out and live it. So it's really a simple framework. And it, it is something that I use and that I encourage people to use. And you'll be able to find it on the website. Please use it. We just recorded an episode last week and we talked about this. And in fact, we learned many new things. We had a very strong bond and we were always able to have those really uncomfortable, tough conversations, which is why we were encouraged actually to create the podcast. There were two reasons, actually. One, because of our relationship and our honest conversations, um, which people had, in fact, when we like to travel together, we go on an adventure every year somewhere else in the world. But what we learned is we're more than mother and daughter. We're two women working together. And that's a very tough, very different relationship for a mother and daughter to have. And we learned a whole new um, way of being together. And so I, I would say we have grown in many ways together 
We've had some battles, some differences, but it's been very interesting, very interesting for both of us. Here, I would simply say, it's absolutely exhausting to cover your truth, not speak your truth. Respect, kindness, I mean, that, that's what it comes down to. But also I look at those words and it's like, you know, tame. I think of tame and I think of taming an animal. Who wants to be tamed for God's sake? That we are speaking our truth, doing it often, very passionately, but doing it with kindness and respect for someone else. There are so many inspirational, powerful, ordinary women living ordinary lives. They're inspiring us in different ways every day. In writing my book, I realized how inspirational my very own mother was. And then you have nurses, teachers, mothers everywhere who are inspiring us in different ways every single day. I certainly hope so. <laughs> um, yes, absolutely. You know, I, I think we start out this journey when we're little, looking up to role models in our lives. I was lucky. I, I had a lot of good role models and a few bad role models, but that enabled me to make certain choices. But I think Becoming a mother changed things for me as well. When I became a mother, I saw my role as a woman in a different way. I was now responsible for other beings, truly responsible, not just myself, but for other tiny little beings. There's many messages. The key message is, is to have flexibility. Flexibility in your life and to be okay with the unexpected because there are gonna be many unexpected things that happen in our life that can be really good or can be really bad. So as I say goodbye and sign off listen trust your intuition be curious and keep creating thank you